Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the best ways to get your footage silky smooth. Now, I'm going to be presenting to you four different techniques to get your footage smooth. Now, some of them are super simple and integrated into Final Cut Pro. Others, they're slightly more tricky, but it is actually easy and it does open up the flexibility of your usage, especially when it comes into things like scripting and getting it done automatically as soon as you import the videos and photos. But hang on in there, check out the video and let me know what you think. All right, so to start off, let me just show you some parts of the source footage. And this is one of the baddest moments. It's uh, not, not good at all. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you the comparison footage. And here's some highlights from it using all of the four techniques. So on the bottom left, we're using the smooth cam from Final Cut Pro. Still very shaky. On the bottom right, we're using something called Inertia, which is smoother. Top right, we've got Hyperlapse, which looks nice. Top left, we got Vid Stab Detect, and that's nice. Hyperlapse and Vid Stab Detect are doing really well, and Inertia is actually doing alright. A bit wobbly, but it's still alright. Yeah, so you can see like over in here in Inertia, there's like that wobble. Look at that wobble. This one here, smooth is really bad. Inertia's all right. Look carefully at hyperlapse. Some weird wobbling on the actual footage. Just walking around. And you don't get none of that inside vid stab detect. And what's cool is, if you notice that hyperlapse, it's more cropped in. Whereas with vid stab detect, you save some of the actual footage. Look at that smoothness. Very, very smooth. Definitely the best one is VidStab Detect. Now let me just show you how it's set up. So inside Final Cut, it's really simple. You just select the clip you want to stabilize and you just tick the stabilization button. But watch out, you see, this is the full video when you click stabilization, it really crops in. And by default, it's set to automatic, which is actually smooth cam. And as we saw, smooth cam isn't actually that good. So you wanna go into inertia cam. Now inertia cam is really, really, really cropped in, which is bad. So to get like a, a nice subtle crop, you wanna make it 0.15. So that way you save a lot of the footage. Now, if you want, you can also play around with that. You can also make it slightly bigger. For me, I found that 0.15 is similar to what the kind of results you get with Hyperlapse and Vid Stab Detect. When you are stabilizing your footage for the first time, it takes a really long time. So you wanna go inside this tick at the top and check the transcoding and analysis. And for me, this, this clip, this footage, which is only three and a half minutes long, it took about an hour to stabilize on Final Cut. And you're gonna find this with all the techniques that you use, it does take a long time. Quick tidbit with doing stabilization actually. If you ever do a break in the video, it's gonna go ahead and start reanalyzing the stabilization all over again. So what you really wanna do is, instead of making any cuts here, you right click the clip and make a compound clip. That way the source footage is gonna be having all the stabilization set up on it. But if you do cuts now, because you're not cutting the clip again, it won't rerun the stabilization. And you won't get such an aggressive jump like you would if you had to recalculate the, the frames itself. Also in Final Cut, if you have it set up in proxy, you need to make it optimized original to play back the actual stabilization because in proxy you will just play the source original file. All right, next up I'm gonna show you um, Hyperlapse. The version I'm using is Windows, it's because it gives you more features and you've gotta use it in Windows 10 to unlock 4K. Unfortunately, it is a paid application, but they do offer a free trial with a watermark on it and some sort of time limit. And Hyperlapse is actually one of the fastest 
video stabilizers out there, but it does involve having to re-encode your footage. It's not built into Final Cut. It's, it's a bit of a shame because you have to use the user interface of Hyperlapse and you can't, for example, use it on the command line to make it part of like a script to automate the process. You need to always use this user interface, as far as I can tell anyway. You hit new, you select the video you want to stabilize. You then select the portion of the clip you want to stabilize. I like to stabilize everything just in case I want to do edits in between the shots. It doesn't have a different crop to the images or different jump points. So you hit next. And the key thing is you need to make sure that the speed up factor is set to 1x so it doesn't actually make it faster. If you know the camera that you're, you filmed it with, you can go ahead and select that. And make sure that the resolution is set to the highest one available. And that's it, you hit next, it will go ahead and process the footage and spit out the results for you. One of the bad things is the results that spat out is gonna be missing audio, so you have to sync that up yourself. Now, the final technique is using VidStab, and this one's the best one. And for this, you need to have FFmpeg installed. And FFmpeg, the great thing about it is, it's open source, and it works on all the platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you'd like a tutorial on how to install it for your particular platform, just let me know and I can do that for you. But pretty much you launch something called Terminal on Mac. And what you want to do is you want to use something called Brew and install FMPEG, but you also want to use hyphen hyphen with libvidstab. And that will make sure that the version of FMPEG that you install has that library for the stabilization. I personally include other libraries, for example, H.265. And to get the footage smoothed out, first you run the step, you input your source video, you have these cool commands on there, and you can play around with them and get a good different results. However, I found that this setup is the best one. And that will save out a file called transformvectors.trf. And that's all the vectors that it will calculate regarding the movement of the camera and the shakiness. You then want to apply it using this command. So again, you input you have your source video, you're using the vid stab transform with the vectors, and then you choose how much of a zoom factor you want to put in, smoothing, all these kind of like effects, and it will output into something called smooth output video. Now I can't take credit for this technique, this is something that I found over in Google. I don't know who the original source author of it, but this is the guy that I found it from, and he's pretty much just outlined the calculations there. I hope you found this video useful. For me, it will really depend on how much shakiness and stabilization is required for the video. For most of the time, you can get away with Final Cut Pro, especially with Inertia, because that one's pretty good. My favorite technique at the moment is using FFmpeg. And you can do some really cool stuff, for example, having a script installed on your NAS server, so whenever you import a video file in the background, it can go ahead and stabilize the ones you don't like. And, um, it will spit out the results for you. So that, that one I really recommend getting into. If you do want a tutorial on how to make these scripts yourselves, let me know in the comments below and I can do that for you. All right, guys, if you found this tutorial useful, hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment below. Of course, the best way to stabilize footage is to make sure that you shoot it stabilized to start off with because there's always going to be artifacts when you're digitally stabilizing anything. All right, and make sure you hit that subscribe button for some more good stuff.